I've just seen the Tomorrow War. I gave it four stars out of five. The special effects are outstanding. And there's not a lot of blood and gore, so you can take your kids or your younger siblings. Um, uh, parts of it were a little dumb, but you know, the family values were very good. And even though there's mass death and destruction, there was no blood. I wonder how that happened. Hollywood. Well, right now, I want to get started on math. And in this video, we're going to be catching up on all of the word problems, the applications that we haven't been doing. Sort of put them all into one place and do them. So this first batch of it, of uh, uh, problems um, show how graphs can actually help you calculate the answers to word problems. We'll see how. Here we go. A daycare center has 24 feet of dividers with which to enclose a rectangular play space in a corner of a large room. OK, 24 feet of dividers and they're going to be folded in the corner in order to provide a temporary play space for kids. The sides against the wall require no partition. And suppose the play space is X feet long. Well, I mean, let's be real. We need. We need. I guess I'll do it in blue. We need to make some walls. So let's let this be the vertical wall. And this be the horizontal wall. And over here in the corner is where we're going to set up the um, dividers to make a play space for the kiddos. Well, okay. You can tell I set it up, right? OK. Now, it also says, this story says, suppose the play space, this area, is X feet long. Well, there are 24 feet of dividers all together. So that would make this length 24 minus this length, which is X. So we have X feet long and 24 minus X feet wide. Now answer the following questions. Express the area A of the play space as a function of X. And of course, you can see the answers right here, but you won't normally. So first, it helps to remember that the area of a rectangle equals length. multiplied by width. So when we're asked to find an expression for the area, it makes sense that we would use length times width. What else could we use? 
Well, the length is X and the width is 24 minus X. And that's how they get this answer. Now, admittedly, it's in a raw form, but it does say do not simplify. I don't know why it says that, but it says that. OK, now I know why it says that, because it's asking about the domain. We don't normally think about the domain of polynomials, um, because the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, but this is an application, and we don't normally think about the domain of applications. But if you were a construction person, you definitely would consider that. So to figure out the domain, we have to ask ourselves, self or selves, how do we make the domain of the function? What function? The area function. They've written it as a function and we want to know the domain. Well, what would make the rectangle not a rectangle? Well, if the width were zero, you up uh, the links, I'm sorry, if the links were zero, it, you would just have this side, all 24 feet of it, uh, flat against that wall. And this wall right here. And if the width, ah, darn. And if the width were zero, then all 24 feet would be in the length and it would be smashed up against that wall. Either way, you would not have a play space. You would just have the dividers sitting against a wall. So let's work on that. 24 minus X equals zero. Now let's solve for X. Because I'm saying minus X, I'm going to add X to both sides. Of the equation here, so I'll have 24 equals X. Now what does this say? This says we will not have a play space. If X equals zero, or if X equals 24, or quite honestly, if X equals anything greater than 24, like 25. What if X equaled 25? Then this side would be 24 minus 25, which would be negative one. And we can't have a negative length or width. Who ever heard? So, actually, if you've ever had a physics class, you've seen that. It has a particular meaning, but we're not dealing with that. So, X cannot be zero. And X cannot be 24 or anything greater than 24, but X can be anything in between zero and 24. No problem there, like 23. 24 minus 23 is positive, it's positive one. 
it it would be a really weird play space, but at least you wouldn't have any negative length going on. So our domain is going to be from 0 to 24. X can be from 0 to 24, but not including 0. That's what the parenthesis means. And not including 24. Because you would have 24 minus 24, which would be 0. And we've already talked about what would happen if either the length or the width were zero. So there we have the domain. Let's draw a line now and talk about the rest. Well, if, excuse me, if I were to multiply this all out, I would distribute x to the 24 and x to the minus x, so I would have 24x minus x squared, and then if I wrote it in descending order, I would have negative x squared plus 24x. This is a cup down parabola. if we were going to graph it. So let's look down here, and we see that this is the only graph that could represent the area function. Got that. Now, what dimensions yield the maximum area? We could use h equals negative b over a and go through that whole procedure, but we have a graph to help us. Let us look at this. Here's the vertex. Now, the vertex is where the maximum area is. The maximum value is the area. So we just have to figure out what that is. So I have to figure out the scale. Okay, well, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe it wouldn't be 5 to get to 400. Would it be 50? No, it wouldn't be 50. What would it be? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 into 400. Is 50. All right, so this is 0. This is 50, this is 100, this is 150, this is 200, this is 250, oh yeah, that works. This is 300, and this is 350. In particular, the maximum area is going to be 150 square feet. Area is always in square feet, square inches, square meters, square something. So the maximum area is 150 and This is the x-axis. And I suppose we're going to have 5, 10, and then halfway to there. This goes from 0 to 24. OK, and so this is how you do this. From 0 to 24, this is the, the um, uh, vertex is going to be halfway between 0 and 24, which is 12. 
So X is going to equal 12. What dimensions yield the maximum area? That's what this tells us. This point is going to be 12, 150. Where this is the maximum area, 150. And this is the value of X that makes the maximum value happen. X is the length, so the length is going to be 12 feet. That means the width is going to be 24 minus 12, which is 12 feet. Which means this is not a rectangle with the length longer than the width, the length equals the width. Which means we're dealing with a square. Now, can I draw a square? Let's see. That's about the best I can do. This is going to be our play space. Twelve feet by twelve feet. And this is a wall. And this is a wall. I do believe my cats might be starting to yowl at each other. The males are learning how to get along with each other. Typically, they just yowl. OK. So anyway, we can ignore it in, in case it gets too loud. So here's our play space, 12 by 12. This is a wall. This is a wall. And we're done with this problem. The goal of the problem is to show how a graph can help you. Now we have this situation again. This graph is going to help us solve this problem. From, 20, from a 27 centimeter by 27 centimeter piece of cardboard, here are the dimensions of the original piece of cardboard. Square corners are going to be cut out. so that the sides can be folded up and they'll become a box. You've had problems like this before. They're very common in algebra classes. So let's look at what the original dimensions were. This was 27 centimeters before X centimeters and X centimeters were cut out of it. Now that means that this length, the length of the box, is going to be 27, wish I could draw sideways, 27, but I can't, so 27 minus X, 27 minus this X and minus this X. So now it's 2X shorter than it was.
Now the same thing is going to be true for this side. It was 27 centimeters. But this, this side will be the original 27 centimeters with X centimeters cut out of the left and X centimeters cut out of the right. For me, they look like left and right, but for you, they might be right and left. I'm not sure. 27 minus 2X. So we come over here to our box. This side <clears throat> is 27 minus 2X. Centimeters. And this side is 27 minus 2X. Centimeters. And then the amount of the box folded up is X centimeters, this X centimeters right there, becomes the side of the box. So <clears throat> we're being asked about volume. Volume is how much stuff a box will hold or any shape will hold. But here we're dealing with a box. So the uh, formula, the formula for the volume of a box is volume equals length times width times height. Although, well, let's just do this. That will be, looking at our drawing, 27 minus 2x times 27 minus 2x times x. And look at the way they've answered. While this is correct, there's kind of an agreement that the shorter factors go in front of the longer factors. So a better way to write it is to put the X in front, 27 minus 2X times 27 minus 2X. And this will be our formula for the volume of this box. Now we have to find the domain of the function. Again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. If x equals 0, we will not have a box. And if 27 minus 2x equals 0, we will not have a box. So x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal 27 minus 2x, but here we have to actually solve for x. So I will add 2x to both sides. I'll have 27 equals 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2. The twos cancel over here. 27 divided by 2 is 13.5, I believe. Let's see. Yes. Okay, so X cannot equal 13.5 or anything bigger, of course. I mean, what if, what if X equaled 14? Then you would have 27 minus 28, which would be negative one. And again, we'd have a negative measurement, which just doesn't make sense. 
unless you're in a physics class. Or, frankly, if you're in trigonometry, but you're not, you're right here. So we still live in a world where negative inches, negative feet, negative centimeters have no meaning. All right, so X cannot equal zero and X cannot equal anything large. Well, it can't equal 13.5 or anything larger. These parentheses mean that X cannot equal zero, X cannot equal 13.5, but X can equal anything in between. Each. All right, so this is going to be our domain, and you can see the domain down here. Here's zero, and here is 13, let's make it red-ish, 13.5. See the domain shows up on the x-axis, as well as having a meaning in real life. Now, this is not a true parabola. And so, the people who, who um, made that question were nice enough to supply us with the maximum value right here. And the, um, the X value that makes the maximum value, the maximum value, four and a half. Right there. Uh, uh, no, that's five. Four and a half would be right here. Okay. So right there. So now what do we know? Up here, we're being asked to Find the dimensions. That means the length and width and height. Well, X equals 4.5. X is the height. Height, right there. Now these, both, the width and the length, are 27 minus 2X, where X is 4.5. So we'll have 27 minus 2 times 4.5. 2 times 4.5 is 9. So we'll have 27 minus 9, which is 18. So the width and the length are going to be 18. 18. 18 and 4.5. So 4.5 inches high, uh, inches, centimeters high, and 18 inches long and 18 inches wide, since length and width are the same in a square. Okay, so the volume for, um, up, up. The formula for the volume of a box, uh, the domain of this box, which is this formula, that is the domain of the volume of the box, which is right there. And then by knowing that the height is 4.5, you can calculate the length and the width by doing that. It's kind of a strange little twist. Okay. Now we're all set for some more normal kinds of 
um, application problems. The rest of these are going to be applications of quadratic functions. More the kind you would expect. The diagonal of a TV set is 26 inches long. If the length is 14 inches more than the height, then find the height and the length. Okay, well, let me get a box. There. Okay. No. There. Let's see if I can. Yeah, how about that? Okay. The diagonal is 26 inches long. Now, you've got a height and you've got a length. The length and the width. The length is 14 inches more than the, well, they're calling it the height. Okay, whatever. I guess it is really, isn't it? Okay, the length is going to be the height plus 14. And the height is just gonna be the height. We don't know it right now. You can't see the answers when you're in my math lab. I think I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes. Blech. Okay. Well, that sure looks like a Pythagorean theorem problem to me. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The vertical side is usually called A. The horizontal side is usually called B. And the diagonal side is always C. No exceptions. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is H, so H squared plus H plus 14 squared equals C squared. Can't believe it. I'm going to have to start spraying myself with mosquito spray before I make videos. I don't look forward to that. C squared, see I'm thinking about itching instead of math, is 26. Well, 26 squared. Glad I caught that. Although I couldn't have gone very far without it. 26 squared. So we're going to have H squared plus H plus 14 times H plus 14 equals 26 squared. 26 squared is 676. Okay, so this is going to be H squared, and this is going to be. Now you can feel free to FOIL. You've got a binomial times a binomial, and in fact, when you have a binomial squared, there is a formula for that, and you might know it. But this is for people who might not know it. I'm going to take this H and multiply it by that H, and by 14, 
and I'm going to take plus 14 and multiply by that H and multiply by 14. So that I will have H squared plus 14H plus 14H plus 14 squared. 196, we'll see. Let's see if it is. 14 squared, yes. Okay, 196, so we'll have 2H squared plus 28H plus 196 equals 676. There you have a quadratic equation. Quadratic because the highest power is 2. Now we're going to use the zero principle. I'm going to subtract 676 from both sides of the equation so that I can have a zero over on this side. Minus 676. Yes, okay, so that's going to be 2H squared plus 28H 196 minus 676. Negative 480, or in our case, minus 480. Now, just like back when we were solving quadratic equations, there is a greatest common factor here, two. 2 goes into 2, 2 goes evenly into 28, and 2 goes evenly into 480. So I'll pull 2 out to the front, and I'll be left with h squared plus 14h minus 240 equals 0. And then, because 2 is not a variable, it's a constant, I can just divide it out to get it out of the way. I don't need it. I can only do this when I have an equation. So I'll have h squared plus 14h minus 240 equals 0. Now, 1 is the coefficient of h squared. So all I have to do is factor the constant, negative 240, into two numbers that add up to positive 14. Well, negative numbers factor into a negative times a positive, or a positive times a negative. But the signs of the factors will be different. So I know that 24 minus 10 is 14. So all I have to do is say, okay, I'm going to factor negative 240 into 24 times negative 10. 24 times negative 10 is negative 240 and 24 plus negative 10 is positive 14. So that tells me that 24 and negative 10 are the two numbers that I want. And I'm going to factor with them. I've got an H and an H and a plus 24 and a minus 10. So H plus 24 times h minus 10 equals zero. I set both factors equal to zero, 
and solve for H. H plus 24 equals zero. And H minus 10 equals zero. Subtract 24 from both sides of the first equation. And I'll get H equals negative 24. And come over here, add 10 to both sides of the equation. And I'll get H equals 10. Now I have two possible answers for one television set. And one of those possible answers is negative 24. I don't think so. So I am going to mark through negative 24 because we're dealing with a more or less real life application. 10 is going to have to be my answer. H equals 10. And if H equals 10, then L is going to equal 10 plus 14, which is 24. So over here, the height, I would fill 10 in. This is actually the answer box in my math lab. So I would write a 10, type a 10. And over here, I would type a 24. Not H equals 10, but just 10. And not L equals 24, but just 24. Because it says length and height right there. Okay, working with A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We also are going to do some work One of the cats is laying on the fan. OK, find the dimensions of a rectangular Persian rug whose perimeter is 28 feet and whose area is 45 feet. The dimensions means find the length and width. Perimeter, I'm going to put a P over the 28. And the area, oh, that's length times width. Oh, this has a little twist. All right, we're going to be working simultaneously with two different functions. Let's do it. Perimeter, I mean formula. Two different formulas. Perimeter equals twice the length plus twice the width because we're talking about a rectangular Persian rug. We're talking about a rectangle. This is the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle and the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. OK. Find the dimensions of a rectangular Persian rug whose perimeter is 28. OK, 28 equals 2L plus 2W and whose area is 45 square feet. 45 equals L times W. All right, now, I am going to have to do this. I'm going to 
Note that I have a GCF here. So 28 equals two parentheses L plus W. And then because it's an equation, I can divide by two and divide by two. 28 divided by two is 14. Over here, the twos cancel, leaving me with L plus W. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve for W. Doesn't matter, I could solve for either one. So I'm going to solve for W and subtract L from both sides of the equation. Over here, L on the right, L minus L is zero. So I'll bring down the W. Over on the left, I'll have 14 minus L. So I have used the perimeter formula to solve for W. Now I'm going to take that W and substitute it for this W because after all, we're dealing with the same rectangle. So I will have, let's bring it down here, 45 equals L times W. 45 equals L times 14 minus L. Now I can solve this because I've only got one variable. 14L minus L squared. Now this is what I'm going to do because I'm allowed. I don't want to have a negative L squared unless I have to. But math is much easier when you have a positive leading term. So let's do this. I'm going to move these two terms over here. Now that's not too hard. I'm going to add L squared to both sides of this equation. There. And subtract 14L from both sides of this equation. So that 14L minus 14L is zero and negative L squared plus L squared is zero. So I will have zero over here. So let's move this over and get neater. L squared minus 14 L plus 45 equals zero. Now I have a one in front of the L squared, which means all I have to do is look at 45 and find two factors of 45 that add up to negative 14. So 45 equals five times nine. And five plus nine equals positive 14. But positive 45, which is what that is, also equals negative 5 times negative 9. So I can add negative 5 plus negative 9 and get negative 14. All right. 
So now I know that these are the two numbers, negative five and negative nine, that I am going to use for factoring. So you'll have an L and an L and a minus five and a minus nine. And then like I always do when I solve a quadratic equation by factoring, I set each factor equal to zero. L minus five equals zero, and L minus nine equals zero. I'll add, um, uh, for L minus five equals zero, I will add five to both sides of the equation, and that will give me L equals five. And then over for L minus nine equals zero, I will add nine to both sides. And I'll get L equals nine. I have two positive answers for the length. Well, Let's just go on up. Ah, they saved me. Excuse me. The Persian rug has a length longer side of nine and a shorter side of five. So that makes it easy for me. I'll put the nine there for longer side and the five here for shorter side. Now let's make sure that works though. Area equals length times width. So 45 equals nine times five. Yes, that's true. But let's make sure the perimeter works. Perimeter equals 2L plus 2W. 28 equals 2 times 9 plus 2 times 5. Is that right? Yes. So 28 equals 18 plus 10, and yes, indeed, that's true. It gives me 28 equals 28. And I also should have gone to an extra step up here and said 45 equals 45, because that is very obviously true, that a number equals itself. Sometimes you need two formulas. Those of you who are going on to calculus will, will see something like this again, and it's called related rates. So you'll get used to it. But this is your opportunity to kind of sample it. My goodness, and that's all there is for this video. All right, be sure to go back over everything we did here, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.